Hi you guys, so I wanted to do a video today on Nana Buruku. Um, I don't know why I just feel such an immense attraction to her. And there have been situations where I had information about her, um, whether it was in dreams, visions, or her audience. And I've been putting off this video because I didn't feel ready to do a video on her. Um, this morning I was like, should I do the video? And I just heard a voice while I was meditating, just do the video. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do the video. So again, this is a lot of information that have come through in my dreams or visions or clear audience. And then I back it up with research that I do on her. So I don't like to research the spirit before I get something from them, just so I can keep the information pure. So I do have some on my notes, my little notes from my dreams and my visions. And a few years ago, I had a, a very specific vision with a woman from 1794, I think it was. Yeah, 1794. Her name was Clarion Floyd or Glarian Floyd. And I was like, who is that? It felt like somebody, an African woman. Um, and I, it felt like it was either me or someone that was very important to me. So that was, that was a few years ago. And I was like, who is this? Like, I couldn't figure it out. Um, but then I had a vision in regards to this woman and the vision was so clear and it was almost like somebody was narrating the, the whole situation because it was like a vision, almost like a movie, like a long vision with a lot of information. And I saw this woman, there were two women, they were part of a cycle, like um, they were like a group, like a networking, if you can call it that, but it was like a sisterhood group of priestesses. And they were going around with white um, cloth, like robes, and it was like a full moon and they were going around and doing a specific chants. And then it went into this part of the vision where the lady was narrating something in my in, in my ears, telling me exactly what, what what they were doing. And then it changed from that sisterhood circle to another part where people were being haunted by white looking people. And these ladies um, look, they, they were definitely, def definitely, they were African, but they were speaking um, like a Creole. Um, it was Creole because it wasn't French exactly. It was Creole, um, so they were Haitian, um, and and they were they have super abilities. So the people haunting them, there were a few women that were part of the people that were haunting. Somehow they were there and they show me how this woman recognized that those women were um, like they had supernatural gifts. So they took them in, in order for them to work with them directly. So that was really interesting because I'm like, you know, I was like, how, what does that have to do with who I'm asking about? And it was almost like these people are descending. Um, they have the gift that comes directly from working with Nana Buruku. And I was like in this belief that I was showing all of this in a vision and clear audiencely somebody was narrating the entire thing and it was so powerful. It was so beautiful. Anyway, so the point is that I do have a very strong attraction to her. Um, some people believe that Nana Buruku is the mother of Babaluaye. Um, some believe that she is the, she's like a primal um, Orisha where goddess, if you can call her that, or God, because she doesn't have, in some, in some of the African cultures, she doesn't, she's not just feminine, she could be masculine too. So she's, you know, like she could be either. But most people know her as the grandmother of the Orishas. And a lot of people know her as the mother of Babaloye. And I do have a very strong connection to Babaloye. He's one of my spirit guys. So I, I just, I was in disbelief that I was getting all of that information about uh, Nana Buruku. 
Um, we know as well that Nana Buruku is the mother of Maul, which is the, the moon goddess, um, the sun, which is Lisa. Um, so the divine feminine, masculine, feminine energies, which are the Marasas, right? We know that. So, but I thought it was really interesting because when I, when I connect to her energy, it's a very strong, very mm, energy, but at the same time, it's very loving. It's very protective. It's very like a grandmother. Um, people do believe that she, well, I think I read somewhere that she was syncretized with St. Anne, uh, St. Anne and even Hecate, which I have a very strong connection to Hecate, but also with the Virgin or Isis even. So it really depends what background you come from. You're gonna find different uh, synchronizations about um, Nana Buruku, but again, she's just like very protected. She tends to, um, you know, the different lineages say different things. Um, I didn't ask her for her number, but what I read is that she is the number 10, which makes sense. But in some cases, she's the number seven because in some cases she's related to, she's the same Orisha in a different manifestation of Yemaya, um, which is number seven. And in some cases, she also work very closely because she's the moon. She's the mother of the moon. She works very closely with the night. And the you know, like Orisha Oya has the nine because of her work that she does, right? So it makes sense that some people see her as number nine, number seven, or number 10. 10 is the beginning, is the end, is the beginning. Um, so it's very interesting. I, I, I you know, I just thought that that was very interesting. One of the things that really a few years ago I started thinking like, can she be related to St. Martha? Because St. Martha is related to the snake, is related to number eight, infinity. And we know that Nana Buruku as the grandmother, or as the mother of the mother, you know, like she has, as the grandmother, she has um, this direct influence over all the Orishas, right? Um, some people, I think, if I remember correctly, she, in some cases, she's known as the mother of the Seva tree. What's the name of the Seva tree in English? I don't know. Is it Baboa or something like that? I don't, I don't know. The Seva tree is very sacred in Lukumi, in Ifa, because in Santeria, because we um, we believe that the Seva tree has a lot of wisdom, a lot of things are done offerings and, and rogaciones and things are done with the Seva tree. So, at, which is the Orisha Iroko. So, it you know, it's, it's just very interesting, all of these things, how they come together, because to me, um, her as the mother of Abaloye, the creator of, like, he's a healing, but he also has a negative aspect, where in some places in Africa, or even in Yoruba, they won't put him inside the house because he can bring illness. Um, and they won't put her either inside the house because she's like the chaotic energy, depending how she wants to come. So it's very interesting to me because as a mother, not only she's like a witch, a sorcerer, um, she's like moon magic, she is serpent. She's a serpent because she's very connected. It's, believe that she transformed into change shifts into a snake to travel through the waters of the rivers and then you know like the lagoons and stuff like that which is an animal that is very closely related to say marta so I, I i always try to put together i know they don't have to be but i always try to put together you know like things because it's like wait a minute because even some people i think they believe that she could be the, um, you know, if she's the grandmother of the Rishas and St. Martha came from Africa, obviously she's also related, she's the grandmother or the mother of St. Martha. So um, it makes sense to me that that was the case. O Orisha um, Nana Buruku comes from, it's said that she comes from the Congo, but you know, do we really know the truth? I guess is the question. Anyway, so my notes here from, oh, oh, and I also wanted to talk about 
um you know she's the archetype of wise woman strong woman protective woman she's a healer she's a herbalist she is um she's basically like a powerful healer in all the ways that you can think of her she's responsible for being the mother of the moon and the sun mawood and lisa um they hold in the divine energies of balance. So together, the Marasas bring the balance to the planet, right? And they are very much connected to, she's also very much connected to the ancestors and the divine wisdom that comes from the ancestors. So that's very important to me. Um, let's see my notes here from anything else that I wanted to share with you because I don't want to share all my dreams or all my visions. Just out of respect for my privacy. <laughs> anyway, so, um, oh, and the rain. She is associated as the Orisha of the rain. We know that when you're going through, uh, going through the process of, become, of doing Santo, you cannot get wet from the rain. So, something there for you to study for sure. Because um, I'm not going to tell you my interpretation about that. I'm going to let you do that. But she is the people that are like she is the the a very serious Orisha because she's associated with life, death, karma, and big things like things that can get someone crazy. So um, normally her children tend to be similar to her in the way that they're more serious. They're a little chunky because you know she was like she, the the way that we see Nana Buruku is as a bigger, um, very big woman, um, older, very ancient. Uh, it, she doesn't like th the whole Aaron thing. I don't think is there is a story about her and Ogun not getting along. A lot of patakis actually about that, but we have to remember that she was before Ogun. And because of that, the, the knives that are used to um, take care of the offerings are made out of bamboo, wood, right? Um, sticks and stuff like that, because there was no iron back in those days. So, I, you know, like you have to analyze that from a different perspective too, because I'm not gonna get into that and it's not like I know everything. I'm just giving you my perspective, but I think the whole reason is because she's, she, she's so ancient as time itself, that she, when you had to work with her, her priests, most of the people, like 99.9 .9 of the people that work with her are women. And there is a reason for that because she's very protective of women. Um, she um, has an issue with, you know, men in, in some way, if you want to say it like that, especially because of Ogung and all of those patakis. But it's also because she's the divine feminine energy. So when you work with her energy, you're calling the divine feminine energy and you want to like really harness that energy. And in order for you to do that, you have to be so powerful, so strong that not every man is going to want to be around a woman like that. So, so anyway, so she loves snakes. She loves snakes, just like St. Martha does. But also, um, even St. Lazarus is associated with snakes. So you know start snake is the creation is is the the animal of creation of medicine even in the ambulance you see the snake like the kundalini right so definitely something there for you to to study um let's see from i think that's all i wanted to share with you i you know like she's very much associated with darkness and my my sign, my Ifa sign is, is all about darkness. So no wonder why I love her. But, um, you know, she's associated with the dark of night, with the moon, with things that are like, things that are no normal things. She's very serious, very, very protective, very, like when she comes through, it feels like, you can do anything you want, but she's not gonna mess with, um, she's not the type of person to, to. Is like the people that represent her archetype are the people that are gonna be more serious, um, 
they might be joking and stuff like that, but it's not it's not their normal thing. Like they tend to be always contemplating deep deep stuff like life, death, karma, infinity, and beyond. <laughs> so um yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was really interesting. Um there are more stuff, more dreams and like, you know. I think the dreams when you have dreams with her is because you're going through a major activation in the nest in in the process of your life. When she came the first time, I was going through a major activation to know how to see people's shadows and the dream it was very powerful dream and I saw like the it was it was crazy. But it was like an activation. It was like a, it was, you know, like a download is when you have an aha moment, but an activation is when something powerful happens and you're like, whoa, I know something, or I feel different, or I know this, and nobody can argue with me about that. Um, that's, that's an activation, right? That's like a gift being activated inside of you. And when she came through, one of the first time that I noticed that she came through, it was when I was going through those activation of working with the shadow and I was like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. Um, so I do have a very like loving, very respectful relationship with her. And I hope that, you know, like don't invoke her, don't work with her. Um, don't ask her for anything if you're not serious. Like b before you even ask her for anything, just give her an offering. You could do water, uh, like a water with a candle and, a tobacco she loves tobacco um you know tobacco is very powerful she, she loves tobacco um she also has a like a staff like a broom and you kind of have like a hook so that's very interesting what else um she just um i think if you start there and like and, and she she does like um uh, just the water the tobacco and a candle will be enough just to give her thanks or you know, some people believe that she's the grandmother or like the main, like the main, like the forefront of the madamas. Um, I don't know if that's true or not because I see her as one, and it could be, um, but I see her as like so powerful and so wow. Like, yes, it could be that she is part of like the main um, umbrella that takes care of the madamas because the madamas are people, were people that took care of those that were, you know, like they were slaves. And when they went to to the new places, um, the women of the house or the men of the house would recognize their abilities and will bring them into the house to nature, uh, nurture their, their kids and their wife and the family. If anybody got sick to make sure everybody was healthy. And also, it reminds me now, like, also those people, it could be very true, but those people were not, um, the madamas were not, and even though they were slaves, they were treated differently because they became part of the family. But at the same time, the madamas also, because of their heart, they work from their heart space. They didn't really have a lot of, um, how you call this, like a lot of judgment against what, and they could have, but because they had to take care of the kids and the family, they also created like a nurturing relationship with these people that they take, that they took care of. But this video is not about the madamas. This video is about Nana Buruku because I love her and I just think that she's amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao.